Hey, what's up, guys? This is Team Hard Life Captain Albert Sarsuche. Well, that video got out about me talking about Bob Hall up here. So I'm actually going to have an interview with Channel News. Um, they are covering the story about Bob Hall Pier and what they're doing to it and so forth. However, I wanted to make sure that the interview and whatever they decide to leave in there is in the right context. Because I'm sorry, I, I've seen where they come in an interview and they cut out and they make it say, seem a certain way. So I just want to cover my six. So I'm going to leave this kind of running and record our conversation. So I'm going to do it like this. We're doing it right here. I'm going to have my reels in the background just so, you know, they can check it out. But I won't be talking to that camera. I'll be talking to the other camera and we'll definitely go from there. But I'm really excited because that was not even five hours later that we got the phone call that they were interested in doing an interview with us. So this is great. Um, five years now? Five years? Uh, six. Six? Almost six years. Almost six years. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it, it's a, kind of a two-part answer there because we were in the back for a while. Okay. And then as sales increased and we um, were able to get moving up here to the front, we did. And when nice. I did, you know, it's been a blessing. So good stuff. And then for us, with the YouTube channel, it's given us uh, a platform where we can actually share our stories because we're actually there on the front lines, you know? Right. Like we actually do fish, we do a lot of testing, and I've actually had it where companies try to bully me and I won't back down. Like, I'm sorry, oh, yeah. I don't like bullies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I hate it. So, That's yeah. awesome. Yes, sir. Now, social media, I mean, it just opens the door for, you know, just uh, a lot of people to tune in and check out what you have. And, and See, no, you're, you're right on that because even then, when we did the other interviews with um, going up to to the board and t talking of our side of the story, uh -huh. they turned around and flipped it. Well, um, our engineers, because back then they had did some rebuilds of the handrails and stuff like that. Okay. Well. As shark fishermen, what we would do is we'd lower people down onto the kayak from the back side of the handrail. Okay. Well, the front side of the handrails, they were all messed up and everything like that. So the engineer, well, um, the shark fishermen there are always, you know, uh, lowering their people down and this and that. I said, oh, really? I said, you fish there? And he goes, well, no. I said, well, then how do you know it's a shark fisherman? Because I've seen pictures and videos and this and that of them. I said, well, if you've seen them and you paid attention, those are the back handrails. Y'all are fixing the front handrails, which we have nothing to do with, you know, unless we're out there fighting a fish and we lean up against it to fight a yeah. fish. I said, so your, your knowledge of what's going on, you're, you're not really in tune to, to it. You know, I said, you want to know, come ask a fisherman. Gotcha. And so when I was talking to him about it, the other guys, well, he's not here for all of it. Like they were trying to shush me up. I said, you know, y'all are asking us the questions. Right. Let us at least answer them, you know, so. Crazy, crazy. I'm going to keep you as a contact anytime I have a fishing story. It won't be the first time. Yeah. Yeah, I've been actually on the news multiple times for, okay. like, my big sharks that I've caught from Bob Hall and yeah, yeah, yeah. held the land-based world record. And then when it comes down to, like, they were uh, talking about new uh, shark fishing regulations and stuff right. like that. So, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, which is a whole another story. <laughs> uh, and they were supposed to have a meeting about it, mm -hmm. you know, in Austin. They never contacted anybody to say when it was. Uh, yeah, they, they they did a sleight of hand with that. They said they were having the meetings, and they had it in a town that has nothing to do with shark fishing. Yeah. So nobody, of course, showed up for it, you know? It's like... <laughs> so where are people going right now to, to do their fishing at, uh, the shark fishing and all that stuff? The Jetties Beach the jetties. and Caldwell Pier. Okay. So. But it doesn't produce like Bob Hall does. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, it's Jeff, my manager. He's been with me <laughs> quite some time and has uh, learned uh, a lot of the stuff and fishing that we do. And if you need to, I can move some of the stuff around so you can get uh, right no, in. It should be okay. I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna clip you up here and then I'll mic on you. And then if you can, run it out through your shirt so we can hide the wire. Okay. Yeah. Gotta fight. Gotta fight. 
got a, I got a lot of stress on my mind. It's a nice day to go. Yeah, I got a line. I'ma call up the whole team. Alright, I'll tell you what, I know your name before the camera, I'm going to get your name and how you spell it. Alberto Sartuche, A-L-B-E-R-T-O, Z-E-R-T-U-C-H-E. Perfect, and uh, I guess your position or title? Um, owner of Hard Life's Bait and Tackle, and owner of Team Hard Life YouTube. Awesome, awesome. You know, uh, came across your YouTube channel, your your video, of course, on Bob Paul Pier. Talk about just the history of Bob Paul and why it was such a you know why it was such a popular spot for uh, fishermen, shark fishermen, and, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Well, I was introduced to Bob Paul Pier when I was twelve. Um, I'd already been fishing my whole life, pretty much, and our neighbor, <clears throat> his dad, actually, you know, asked us one day. He's like, you know what? He's like, I'm gonna would y'all like to go to Bob Hall Pier to go fish? And we'd always seen him come back with sharks and big fish, and we just heard stories, you know? It's this far off land of where you can go and visit and catch big old fish, and that's, you know, from a fisherman's perspective, growing up to that, I mean, you just idolize that. Like, it's la-la land that you can come back with and feed your family, you know? And we grew up, you know, pretty poor. Like, we, we survived, I learned how to fish, and, and, and it helped me feed the family. And then to see them come back and just give fish away because they would catch so much, I was like, man, that's the place to go. Well, when I was 12, I got introduced to Bob Hall Pier, and sure enough, it was you learned how the shark fishermen were, the red fishermen, the king fishermen, and all the different groups of fishermen that were out there. And even then, it got to the point, as returning fishermen out there, if you were a shark fisherman, you got on for free. But if you're trouting redfish, they would make you pay. And it was crazy because I was like, well, I'm, I'm you know, going to go with the shark fishermen at the end. They're, yeah, but you don't have the reels. So that's when I learned I had to get shark fishing reels so I didn't have to pay to get on the pier because they knew with the big sharkers out there, the tourists would come and they would come and they would come just because they wanted to see a big shark get caught or the big gear or just talk knowledge with the guys at the end of the pier. So for us, it was of all piers, the place if you want to learn or see big fish or see the gear of what you need to work into, you go to Bob Hall Pier and learn that deal. It wasn't to, oh, I'm going to go buy a hamburger at Bob Hall. No, it was to go fish. You know, the, of course, uh, our city county leaders, they're looking at ways to uh, revamp uh, mm -hmm. the pier, of course, after we see some hurricane damage. And, and uh, you know, it's going to have to be totally rebuilt. You know, they're looking at adding in you know all these different features there uh, for for the board the boardwalk and the you know the, the pier out there. And, mm -hmm. You know what what are your thoughts? I know I heard you know uh, you expressed some of them on on your YouTube uh, channel, but what are your thoughts on that? Well, actually, it's a two part answer for you. One is the pier was actually designed to fall apart during a hurricane, and then they can use sonar, pick the pieces back up, and put it back together as a Lego set. That's why all the pieces were the way they were. It's made so that way it can be knocked down and rebuilt. Now, years later, we can understand that they want to change it up and ramp it up and, well, awesome. But what do you mean by that? Oh, so we, oh, you go to this page and you have these selections, A, B, and C. I don't like A. There's the overhang, this direction, this new chair for B, there's different kind of seating for C. Well, where's D? I don't like any of that. Why? I can't cast. You know, we go out there, we're fighting a fish, and people got their family to picnic out on the chair, and you, you got to move left or right. You're going to step over a kid or something. So now you're taking away the mystique of going to fish to Bob Hall Pier. Now it's a amusement park or a, a picnic pier. If they want that, build a separate pier and make it a surf pier, surf like a surfing pier. Nobody fishes. They just go out there for the big waves like they do in um, – California, they have piers where you can't fish. It's all surfing. Well, if they want that, build something different. This is a fishing pier. Bob Hall Pier is known throughout the world. I've talked to people from Africa, Australia, Europe, Australia, Japan. I mean, they all come out there because they've seen and they've heard stories. They've seen pictures. They've seen, especially now with YouTube and all these social medias that are out there, has given us more power to show what's actually going on there. 
a lot of people have heard stories about me on the pier and I've heard stories about other shark fishermen on the pier but now with video and pictures it's all coming to light like no that place really does catch monsters or it really does do this the awning that they're wanting to put at the very end right now they can't even keep a clean keep up with a poop at the end of the pier coming off the lights that are out there and they want to put a big old awning I've seen the one at Copart it has big old slats and yeah it's partial shade not completely so what's going to end up happening birds are going to be sitting up there and they're going to be pooping on everybody on the bottom so now they're, they're going to go back to their drawing and say oh well we're going to have to readjust and put needles so birds don't go flying up there okay so further down the road a hurricane comes back that thing's going to go flying it's going to cause more damage land halfway down the pier probably take it out and then are, they're going to charge us for maintaining it and I mean, all these extra hidden costs that they're not talking about. And for us, it's the bottom line. I want to go out there and fish. That's why I'm paying so much to go out there and fish. I don't want to have to worry about a family going out there for a picnic and have nothing to do with fishing. They just they want to take up a big old spot because they're on the water, above the water. Come on. I, at the very beginning of the pier, I love the recommendations. That's cool. That keeps every, all the picnicking, the... The food, the restrooms, and all of that, yes, separated. That's, by all means, hey, have carnivals out there. I don't care. But at the end of the pier, I'm out there to fish. I'm taking my kids away from all of this electronics, all the the games, and, you know, Mother Nature. That's what it's there for, you know, doing something God intended us to do, and it's be outside, learn to, learn to feed our family, learn to feed ourselves, and pass on knowledge. You know, what, uh, I, I don't know at this point if anything is finalized, but what would you uh, like to express, of course, to our county leaders about, it, about this project? They need to listen to the fishermen. These are the, I mean, those tourist dollars are there because of the fishermen. The fishermen are why they come down here. They, oh, they heard of Bob Hall Pier. They heard of this. They heard of that. They're, what do you want it to be now? Oh, I heard it used to do this back in the day. They don't do that no more. Oh, they, yeah, I remember my grandpa used to fish out there, but they don't allow fishermen no more. Why? Because some kid got hit, you know, on a cast out, you know. Accidents are going to happen. I've been out there. I cast out. Weight breaks off. Line breaks off. Fishing line fails. It's going to happen. I've seen leaders fly left, see leaders fly right. But as a fisherman, I know this. Normally, we warn people, hey, headache or going out or or something. Somebody that has never been out there and has fished the pier will know what those signs mean or to be on the lookout. They're going to, you know, something's going to happen, we're going to, hey, and they're going to look right into it instead of being aware of it. There's so many things that with fishing, it's got to be addressed. I mean, this is, they are repairing the fishing pier, not a boardwalk. So you, you want to make sure they're considering the fishermen out there versus uh, everybody else pretty much. Yes, because without the fishermen, the tourists ain't going to be coming out there. I mean, at the end of the day, some, like I said, they're going to hear stories of what it used to be. Oh, no, they don't do that no more. And some, you know, that's, that would break my heart. I go out there and, you know, hear, oh, man, we used to slam big old sharks, fish these kind of reels, and well, why, aren't, why isn't nobody doing it? Oh, they changed it, and now it's a boardwalk or it's a uh, picnic pier. Man, that's, that's depressing. That, that just, <laughs> like I said, just it coming out of my mouth right now hurts my feelings. It, it really does. And talking to, I mean, even on my channel, everybody is just blowing that video up about, yes, I mean, exactly. that They go on to go out there to fish. You're going to take that right away from those guys to provide for these tourists, saying they're there for the tourist dollars. Without us, these, ain't, these guys ain't going to come back out there. Uh, it, have you have you reached out to any county leaders uh, yet? Or I mean, you were saying they they just had those three options there on the, on the uh, survey. So uh, ha, have you gone further to uh, express? Uh, I know you're vocal and you have your uh, YouTube hmm. outlet, uh, but have you have you reached out to any of the leaders? Or? Yes, I actually um, on the comments at the very end of your selections of process or whatever, I put on there. I said, where is our ability to say no? They didn't give us an ability to say no. They just said it's A, B, or C, and that's it. So you had to vote for something, and it really wasn't voting for something. It was the lineup, like um, most priority, A, B, or C. You know, which one do you want more or less? 
It wasn't the ability to say, no, that we don't want that out there. It was these choices, and that's all I was given. So in the end, I put all of this in there on the email, and then I even saw where we were able to uh, email the judge, Judge uh, uh, Canales. Canales, yes. And I emailed her the same way. Like, where was our input on being able to say no? Like, we don't want that stuff out there fishing. Fishing Bob up here, we lean off the back handrail and we cast toward the front because it's too shallow this way to just sit there and throw a cast and get good distance. There are days when that extra 15 to 20 yards determined whether you caught fish or you didn't catch fish. And so leaning off the back handrail, I pulled, proved it time and time and time again, that extra yardage I was able to get because I could lean off the handrail gave me the ability to catch fish. Now you're gonna take that away or you're gonna reduce the area, oh, you can't do this. So the awning's in the middle, you can only cast that off the sides here, which means I'm gonna have to cross cast this way or cross cast this way to be able to do it. But it all depends. Like I said, there's no finalized thing on what is going on and there's nowhere to vote. There's, I mean, I, I've actually, I went online after I heard about the, the they were finalizing this. You can't find nowhere to, to talk to or who to talk to anymore. And they did it in the middle of the week during the day. Hey man, we got regular jobs too. Like y'all need to do it like on a Saturday or after hours where a lot of people can attend. You know, we got to work, we got to pay bills, so. Yeah, exactly. Good deal. Uh, let me pause this for a second. Was there anything I was forgetting to ask or anything else you wanted to mention or say or? I guess, you Just, know, if, if they go through with this plan, you know, with, with all the different features and everything, uh, so, so uh, you know, it's, it's just one of those things, I guess, uh, is it going to make it, or, well, you've been saying, you know, is it going to make it tougher on fishermen to actually go out there and do what they love? And, I'm, I'm going to go with yes on that, because now they're adding in these benches, and if they've ever done any research on how we land big sharks, before I started creating big shark landing nets, we walked them down to the beach. Because now, shark fishing ain't about killing everything. It's about CPR, bring it in, get a photo, get it released as quickly as possible. And you know we've done thousands of sharks taking them to the beach. Now they want to put out big, bigger points of having to go around, you know, little, um, eye junctions or something like that, and then they want to put benches and stuff. When we move a shark down, it's a crew of guys moving down the pier to help guide, to let people know, hey, we're coming in, we're moving a shark. And for the most part, everybody's cool about it. But you, if you put a chair like they do at Co Park, there's not going to be real safe room to be able to move. And are people willing to move at that point? Like I said, they're going to be getting into this mindset that they want, this is their area, you don't cross it. Sorry, bro, we're not in your backyard. We're on the public pier. So you're going to take a lot of that sense away of it being public to more of, hey, this is the spot. This is where we're at. Nobody can cross it. And I, I have a feeling it's going to really make it difficult for fishermen to continue doing it or um, landing bigger fish the way they set out to do it. I mean, I've got several hundred thousand dollars worth of tackle. Now I ain't going to be able to use it because they were on that pier because they say no. That's the whole reason why I bought it all. That's the whole reason why I'm passing it on to my kids so they can use it. This it's they're, they're going to be killing a lot of dreams. And they kill the mystique. Yeah, that's what the, it is. The mystique of Bob Hall Pier. Don't take that away, guys. That is that's why everybody comes down. That's why you have your tour do, tourist dollars because of the fishermen. You start taking them out, you're gonna it ain't gonna be the same. Yeah. Good deal, buddy. That was great. You did great. Thank you. I'm going to have to check out your YouTube video a little bit more there. Uh, let's see here. I am going to... What can you show me? I guess if you want to show me uh, maybe some of your products or just for video. Uh. All right, guys. So with this video, I wanted to show this because it gives a lot more insight to what kind of questions were asked. And it gives me the ability to share a lot more of the concern and or thought put behind you know what was going on you know and now this is all in contingency of what the family is planning on doing because we've heard 
that a lot of the stuff that was moving forward has now been put on hold now that the family has put a stop to everything because of what the board and or the judge was doing with the property that they weren't supposed to be doing. So right now, like I said, this video was all said and done before um, the family started taking matters into their own hands. Um, you know, and we're with them on that. You know, they we hope they keep it the way they originally set out to be and hope that the rest of the public doesn't get punished for the actions of a few that have tried to take it away from us. So, you know, our hopes and dreams are all depending on the family that originally donated the land for public use. And we hope they keep it that way for sure because then that ensures that we can keep going out there, keep fishing, keep passing on the knowledge and the dreams and, you know, the whole priceless moments that we would catch on Bob Hall Pier, guys. So stay tuned as we continue doing our due diligence of research and keeping up with what's happening with the legal matters with Bob Hall Pier. And we will share it. And also, too, you can follow along on the news when they do decide to post up what's going on. So we're definitely excited and we'll keep rocking and rolling with it.